Hello everyone. Now, I want to do a video talking about how OCD operates. So when you're triggered, and that can happen within seconds, within milliseconds, in fact, boom, triggered. Okay, so then you've got that problem of what are you triggered by? What are you scared of? What's caused the trigger? What's fueling the anxiety, the guilt, the panic? So looking at the fears there, looking at the irrational beliefs. But then what then happens, and this is why fear of fear is such a catalyst in most people's suffering. This is why fear of fear plays such a big part. Because when you're triggered, within two seconds, it can then feel, what is if I'm stuck feeling triggered forever? What is if I'm stuck feeling this way forever? I'll give you some examples. So when I used to be triggered by real event false memory, usually it used to be latched on for ages with just the guilt ramped up really, really high 24-7 from the minute I woke up to the minute I went to bed. Okay, that's what I felt. But when new triggers happened, when it used to scan for something else, it would be, <gasps> you've done wrong, you've broken the law, you're going to jail, you're going to be abandoned forever, you're going to be rejected. So you'd be triggered by that because of the beliefs at play. Because OCD would have tried to find something, it tried to find some sort of evidence to prove why your fear is true, to prove why your worst case scenario is true. And then you get scared of feeling that way forever. So you can see how it becomes a double whammy. So this is why we talk about fear of fear a lot, because let's say you're triggered by fear of rejection. OK, you're triggered because real event, false memory, you might have done something wrong in the past and all the other guilt related themes. You've just been triggered by something. OK, now, yes, you break those fears down, you break down the fears of rejection, you break down if you went to jail, um, you, you, you go towards the worst case scenario, making peace with the worst case scenario, remember, and acceptance and agreement. So you can break those things down, being abandoned by family, loved ones and so on. That takes time, but those can be broken down, those fears. But the problem was it once I broke them down, it was, oh, shit, what if I can never get out of that triggered state forever? which is fear of fear, okay? So when I was progressing on the journey, when I was been in the door a couple of years, it was, okay, I'm making really good progress, but then I got scared of triggers because the beliefs and the internal framework in regards to the irrational beliefs, the disputing, um, I was becoming less and less scared of, of my worst case scenario or scared of all the core fears that originally at play. They had been worked on, but the problem was, I got so scared and terrified and t petrified of any trigger, any any slight sensation of discomfort, of going back to how I was, of being stuck forever or having a new trigger and I wouldn't be able to cope and being locked in that internal state, usually around new themes as well, um, new real events, new fal false memories. Old themes coming back that I haven't yet got over, or old real events coming back and think, shit, what if I suddenly remember this? And going back down that rabbit hole of, of analysing and replaying and the rumination all starts again. Okay, but a lot of that is fueled by what ends if I'm stuck in this triggered state forever? So we have to break that down, that even if you were, and making peace with that and not catastrophizing that. So gradually bringing down the internal catastrophization, the zero to 100 miles per hour reaction that happens internally. Okay, and we have to catch when we're doing that. OK, and when I say catch when we're doing that, that isn't trying to push it away. That isn't trying to force rid of a feeling. That isn't trying to adopt some unhealthy, addictive behaviour to escape. No. OK, but it's seeing, you know, when I got really wise to OCD, I could see where I was going wrong. I could I felt like I couldn't really do anything about it at the time, because when you're internally locked in, it feels very overwhelming. I get that. But, but when, you're, when you're making progress, you see, ah, OK, yes, I see how it operates now. I see what it's doing. You become aware of its tricks. You become aware of the OCD's next step because OCD is always looking to be one step ahead of you. Um, so when you become aware and also, you know, this is why we have the WhatsApp groups, because you see how other people are becoming stuck. You see what's triggering other people. You're seeing how they react, how they catastrophize, how, how their beliefs are causing why they, why they feel like they do. Are their fear of fear is playing, okay, uh, playing a big part in their journey. So you then can see, ah, yes, that's how it operates. So that's a very important part. But I really want to highlight that. And that becomes a problem. Okay, so when you're triggered, 
you then got to look at, okay, fear of fear is going to come at play. It's going to play a big part here. Okay, so this is where it's easy to feel demotivated. This is where it's easy to sort of chuck the towel in and give up because we say, yes, you know, triggers are happening less and less. I'm working on the core fears, but then you panic when you feel that way forever. Because I remember at times, it just, it, I'm doing really well, maybe having sort of two weeks, three weeks without any big triggers, not really going from setback to setback, doing okay, overall doing okay. And then a trigger would hit me, usually got a big trigger after that time because, you know, fear of fear was at play. And because I was so scared of going back to square one, OCD was sort of taking it up a notch. It was looking for that next thing. And when that next thing did hit... I thought, oh shit, and you can see that internal, <laughs> your whole world crumbling down. Because OCD has a knack of convincing you, it's very convincing, it all feels very real, hence why it's a disorder that it is. You wouldn't, be wa- you wouldn't be watching this video now if it didn't feel real, if it didn't feel very convincing. It has a knack of convincing you you're going to be stuck this way forever, right? Now, you know, some of my triggers used to last for weeks and months because it, it, that's how real it felt, especially with things in the past. Because like, oh shit, this thing happened. I'm never going to get out of this. I'm going to feel guilty forever. I'm going to feel anxious forever. I've got no way of relief here because this thing happened. I can't do a compulsion because this thing happened. I'm going to try and analyse, but no, this thing happened. You know, that's how it feels, okay? But we've got to remember that making peace, although this is very, very difficult, making peace with potentially feeling that way forever is very, very important. I am not scared of any setback now. I am not scared of any relapse. And that's because if I did have some big trigger, if I did have some sort of relapse or setback, then I'd see it as an opportunity. I'd see it as a chance to sharpen up my rational beliefs. I'll see where I'm sharpen up my rational beliefs, sorry, and see where I'm slipping back into irrational beliefs, slipping back into old black and white rigid thinking. Okay, so I'm not scared of any setback. If anything, I'd see it as a big opportunity for me. Okay, and funny enough, they do not happen because I there is no fear of fear at play. I am not scared of OCD. I am not scared of being triggered. I am not scared of oh, what if it comes back and I can't cope. I am not scared of that at all. All that would realistically happen is that I would feel different, and the the enjoyment, the excitement, uh, just how I feel would be different. But nothing would physically change. Nothing externally would change. You know, my plans wouldn't change. My schedule wouldn't change. My routine wouldn't change. My living life and bringing OCD for the ride wouldn't change. Um, nothing would change. All that would change is how I feel internally. And because of these beliefs, and that's taken time, because of that internal framework, I am no longer scared of OCD. And hence why it doesn't come back. Okay, I'm very aware I have OCD, like we compare it to sobriety. I'm very aware that it could come back. I'm very aware if I slip back into my old way of thinking, it would most likely come back. I'm very aware if I do compulsions again and chase a certainty, that it would most likely come back. But when you become very, very wise to that, um, it happens less and less. And like I said, Momin covered this really well, a video that he did of, of not being scared of relapses, not being scared of setbacks. And when you fully embody that and fully believe that, and fully philosophize that it, 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 it happens less and less and you're not you don't have the internal guard up you're not on the watch out for ocd you're not watching it like a hawk which is what i deal with many many times when i speak to people with fear of fear i can tell that they want to live life but the thing that's holding them back is oh shit what is if it comes back can it just not come back and if that internal guard is up pushing it away pushing it away resisting it, trying to fight it, oh shit, here it comes, and then just pushing it away. Now that can feel very subtle, that can almost feel unconscious, because we don't really know we're doing it, but internally, deep down, there's a deep-rooted belief that we need OCD gone, that we need to feel good to live life, that we need to feel just right, we need to feel perfect for me to live my life, or have this career, or have this job interview, or go to this sporting event, go to this music concert, to go on holiday, to start dating, to do this with my partner, to get married, to have kids, you know, you're looking for that perfect feeling, okay? Now, once we make peace that, and drop the expectation on how you feel, that is when the cogs start turning. That is when you you set the you build the uh, you set the building blocks and set the foundations to really getting better. Now the biggest thing that helped me with this and approaching triggers and dealing with triggers was seeing it like this. That however I'm triggered, 
whatever I'm triggered by, whenever I'm triggered, see it as an opportunity, okay? That does not happen overnight. Let me remind you of that very politely. <laughs> that does not happen overnight because you say, yeah, but Sam, I feel like shit when I'm triggered. How can I see that as a chance? How can I see that as a good thing? How can I see that as an opportunity? I get that. I understand why you're saying that. I said that. I said that very, very much. I said, what are you talking about? How can I see a trigger as a good thing? I fucking hate it. Blah, 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 blah. Going off down that rabbit hole. Victimhood or why me, why me, why me? Why do they, why does my mates not have to have triggers? Why have I got to have triggers? Why is it just me suffering? You know, I fell down that rabbit hole. Complete waste of time. Got me nowhere. So over time, I want you viewing triggers as an opportunity to look at your rational beliefs, look at your thinking, which is causing the disturbed feeling of anxiety, guilt, rage, panic, okay? Remember remember the Albert Ellis book, the first book on our list, when he talks about A plus B equals C, how to stubbornly refuse to make yourself miserable, that book, how the activating event, so the trigger, you're saying, well, that's the consequence. That's why I feel anxious, because of this thing. No, it's the belief. So when you are triggered, view it as a chance to sharpen the belief work. How can I work on that belief? How can I work on my catastrophization? What am I doing to, to really cause the anxiety and guilt? Am I writing myself off? Am I saying that I deserve no good? Am I saying that if I've acted wrong, I am wrong forever and can never change? Am I saying that I should be punished forever, um, that I should be, um, that I'm going to live with guilt forever and I can't stand the guilt? Am I terribleizing? Am I awfulizing? Am I saying I can't stand this? This is the worst thing ever. This is awful. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Those kind of beliefs is a chance to see where you're going wrong. It's also a good chance to apply compassion for yourself and for other people. Looking at people who are maybe living your worst case scenario, who, who are living with rejection, who are living in jail, for example, who are um, who have done something wrong and they've learned from that. Maybe they've broken the law. Uh, maybe they've made a silly mistake and now they can learn from that. So you can have compassion and you can have acceptance for them and then compassion for yourself, acceptance for yourself while still rating the behaviour seeing the behavior is bad. Like even with real event false memory, even if you've done something wrong, bad, made a mistake, you can see that as, as a mistake still. You can, you can still see that as bad. But the problem is, is when you then see yourself as bad. So you've got to view it as, okay, what am I triggered by? You know, I'm just using examples here of real event false memory or the guilt related themes, because this is what I specifically suffered with myself. And um, so you need to view it as, okay, I'm triggered. How can I use this for a chance to to, to, to sort of enhance my mental health. And what I mean by that is prolong the, the, the recovery. So the long lasting, robust level of freedom, not thinking, oh, I'm triggered now, how to look for quick relief. Okay, that's why many people fall on that first hurdle, hurdle because they just go, shit, I'm triggered, quick relief, quick relief, hence why compulsions happen, hence why unhealthy behaviours happen, because it's that constant chase for quick relief, okay? So we've got to view a trigger as, okay, how can this help me long term? How can this help me improve my emotional health long term, okay? And once you get into that habit, it becomes, it becomes a, you become a master of overcoming obstacles. You become very good at dealing with problems and facing adversities and dealing with issues, sorting issues and overcoming them. Okay, you've got to view triggers like that. Just another obstacle for you to overcome in your journey, for you to overcome in your life, because it could just be life problems as well. You know, you don't just have OCD and no other life problems. You know, we speak to people who have serious ailments in their life, maybe homeless and maybe ill as well. And maybe you've got family members who are ill, family members who have passed away, and maybe they've just lost their job, had a big financial hit. We deal with all people dealing with OCD as well, as well as all other life issues. Okay, so it's very important to remember that. So try and view these things, view these problems, view these drawbacks in our life as an opportunity, a chance for us. Okay, well, I want you looking back and, and, and being very grateful for this, it's grateful for the lessons that you've learned. Yes, the suffering is bad. Of course, the suffering is bad. You know, I would change the suffering of how I felt when I look back on my journey, but I would not change the sort of the lessons and the, and the perspectives and the gratitude that I've learned from that. But I say I change the suffering, but because of the extreme level of suffering, that's what really pushed me to look at my beliefs 
and really think, okay, what have I got to lose there? I've got to change my beliefs there. I've got to at least try and change and put in the work and see where it gets me. And I'm very, very thankful that that suffering pushed me towards um, getting better and healthier mentally and physically and leading you to a place where you feel like you can overcome anything. Yeah, it's not to say you're 100 going to overcome everything. No guarantee with that. But you're just in a mindset of overcoming, overcoming. You become very good at it. You actually become to a place where you enjoy it. Yes, even with life problems, you become a state where you actually enjoy facing problems. That's very difficult, of course, because there's huge problems in life. And I, I wouldn't enjoy the huge big ones, but you see it as a chance. Okay, progress. How can I overcome this? Right? Anything happens in our life. Okay, it's very important to remember that. So when you next approach that big trigger, when you next have that big trigger, when you next have that big setback, big relapse, I want you seeing it as an opportunity. No negativity, no complaining, no venting, no whining. I've got complete sympathy as to why we do it, because I was there, it's understandable, but it's not going to help us. Okay, we are very realistic here at OCD Recovery. We're very tough love. And we're talking from personal experience. We're talking from the in-depth knowledge of what's worked with us. Okay, and we know that venting, complaining, whining, moaning, victimizing, saying that this is the worst thing ever, why me, why me, why we, isn't going to work. Complete waste of your time. We have to view it as another obstacle to overcome. How can I break down what I'm scared of? How can I make peace of worst case scenario? How can I change my behaviors that's going to help me to my long term robust recovery? Very important to remember.